Welcome back. We'll meet again. Have a good year. What? Have a good year? I sat there like a rock, unmoving, until I could no longer hear the clacking sounds of their footsteps. Oh, that's right, we were in the library. Oh, okay. We were like two sentences, two sentences off the end of that little bit. I was on my way back home. The cries of the Higurashi accentuated the already lonely evening. More time had passed than I thought. The orange of the dusky sky was being chased down, little by little, by an indigo colour approaching from the east. Exhausted from the slow climb towards Hinamizawa, without even noticing, I'd gotten off my bicycle and was pushing it uphill. I don't understand any of this. Me too. No one had told me to my face that I'd done something wrong. No, in fact, it might have been much easier on me that way. What happened yesterday really was just my curiosity. It really was no more than a quiet prank, no more than having the courage to cross at a red light as long as you did it with other people. The storehouse for ritual implements, hallowed ground, only accessible to the family of the priest. For sure, I'd seen terrifying things that I'd never imagined would be there. Thinking on it now, though, it didn't matter what was stored away inside. It didn't make the wrong I had committed any more right. What the four of us did, Mion seemed to know about it. For some reason, even the police were trying to learn what the four of us did. Did we do something so bad? Really? It doesn't matter how wrong it was. I did something wrong. It was nothing more than that, and yet... I couldn't accept it. I didn't apologize to Mion or Oishi-san. All I did was shield myself with ambiguities. I did something wrong yesterday. I set foot into a forbidden storehouse for a little bit of mischief. He's waffling! Move on! We get it. I'll forget everything I saw in there. I won't ever do something like that again either. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If I apologize like that, would they forgive me? The suddenly cool evening air left no room for such sentiment, however, as it mercilessly chilled my feet, urging me to head home as soon as possible. In the end, the evening air was correct. If I trudged along such an isolated road, regrets would pile on top of regrets, but nothing would change. Let's go home. I'll go home, go to my room, put on my favourite music or something, and go to bed. That sounds very nice. That might sound plain and boring. <laughs> Not at all. But it's probably the strongest I've felt all day. What? Whoo! Now that I've made a decision, there's no point dawdling in a place like this. I sat back on my bike. I pushed hard on the pedals. I rapidly advanced forward. I steadily gained speed. The wind was cutting and mercilessly cold, but it actually felt good, as if it were softly punishing me. Indeed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> good for you. I didn't eat much dinner before excusing myself early and returning to my bedroom. My mum called me from downstairs. Keiichi, you have a call. It's from Sonozaki-san. Sonozaki? Was it Mion? No, it was Shion. I just remembered. She'd had something she wanted to tell me today. Oh, Ishi-san had interrupted us, so she didn't get a chance. Shion had said she'd call tonight. Hello? Is that you, Shion? Hello. Ran into a bit of trouble today, didn't we? She said it so plainly that I got a bit annoyed. She was the one who left me there and ran. Don't say that. I gave you the signal to run away with me, didn't I? You just sat there looking dazed, Kei-chan. Uh, I wasn't dazed. All of a sudden you left me there, and after that I had to put up with that Oishi guy for ages. Don't complain to me about it. I can't believe she passed it off like that. She looks just like Mion, and yet inside she's this different. 
I got a little irritated at myself when I realized I was, somewhere in my mind, hoping for the same reaction I would get from Mion, even though she's a different person. Uh, sorry. Next time, I'll run away first thing and leave you there. Hey, it's ladies first. <laughs> Shion laughed refreshingly. <laughs> Why is the refreshingly needed? <laughs> what? When I heard her voice, I realized that she wasn't really that angry or anything. It was just as she said. The cause of my temper was because it was my own fault for not leaving immediately. I'll stop blaming it on others. Well, that would be a first, wouldn't it, Keiichi? Blaming it on others would be... something I do all the time. Anyway, you had something to tell me, right? Oh yeah. I mean, if you already know, then it's not something that bears repeating. Um... Do you already know? Know what? She unlowered her voice suddenly, as if she were glancing around. I had no idea what I could already know. Sorry, but I have no clue what you're talking about. At least give me a hint. So that means... You don't know. She seemed to take my stupid-sounding question as evidence. <laughs> However, her voice didn't sound disappointed or exasperated in the slightest. Actually, it's about last night, during the Watanagashi festival. My entire body jolted as I was assailed by a terrible feeling. Is she on... Going to ask the same thing? Hello? Kei-chan, are you listening? Uh, yeah, I am. What about last night? The four of us went in there, right? She didn't beat around the bush. Whether or not I wanted to admit it, that was the actual honest truth and I couldn't act like it hadn't happened. What? She was literally there with you, huh? Then, after that, we walked away together, and then we went our separate ways near the stone stairs, right? Takano-san and Tomitake-san went to the stream and you stayed there, Kei-chan. I went over to see some relatives. Yeah. Why do you ask? We won't make any progress if we keep asking each other questions, so let me ask this question first. <laughs> we won't make any progress if we do this, so I'm going to do this. Hmm, that makes perfect sense. Okay? You mean, did I see Tomitake-san and Takano-san last night? Huh? Oh. Yes. Did you see the two of them after that? I'd be lying if I said I wasn't surprised. This is the third time I've been asked this question today. Why? Why? What the hell was going on? Why? Why are you asking me that? No, Kei-chan. I'm asking the question. Please answer me. Did you, Xion? If you answer first, then I'll answer. <laughs> no you. No you. No you. My shabby response betrayed how scared and small I felt now, after everything that had happened today. Xion didn't say anything for a few moments. Just as I was beginning to think I'd really put my foot in my mouth with that response, she finally answered me. Of course I didn't see them. <clears throat> Excuse me. My relatives were with me and they can vouch for that. I didn't see them either. People can vouch for me too, like Mion, Lena, and everyone else. Now that we knew our answers matched, she let out a sigh that sounded more relieved than anything else. Thank you for answering me honestly. Okay then, I'll tell you. Apparently last night, Takano-san and Tomitake-san <gasps> died. No way. Sorry, Shion, what was that you just said? Apparently last night, Takano-san and Tomitake-san died. Takano-san was found burned to death, ooh. Tomitake-san was, well, it looked like a suicide. I found out this morning. I heard my dad talking to a relative on the phone about it. Late last night, a police car on its way back from festival security duty had discovered Tomitake-san lying in the middle of the road heading towards Okinomiya. Okonomiya. Okonomiya. He had clawed out his throat and died. What? He clawed out his own throat? Th th that bright, cheerful Tomitake-san? That can't possibly be right. The police did an autopsy. He did it with his own fingernails. 
He scratched at his throat so hard that he ruptured his blood vessels and bled out. Ew. He died in a pool of his own blood. That's what they said. I've never heard of such an insane suicide. You can just scratch open your own throat like that? I realized I was yelling too loudly, so I lowered the force I was putting into my voice. <laughs> Why would you word it that way? <laughs> Come on. I lowered the force I was putting into my voice. Say I lowered my voice. Come on. I didn't want my parents to hear me, so I switched to the cordless phone and ran up to my own room. Sorry for yelling. So, was Takano-san, was that a suicide too? In her case, it's a little unclear. Takano-san's body was found in the mountains of Gifu Prefecture. Employees at a rest stop nearby reported to the police late that night that they could see flames in the mountains. The firefighters dispatched there were the first ones to find her. An autopsy concluded that it was the burned corpse of a half-naked female. They initially considered the body beyond recognition, but directly after there was a request for a dental comparison from the XX Prefectural Police Station in Okinomiya, and the results concluded that it was Mio Takano. The cause of death wasn't confirmed, but it was highly likely it would have been a homicide, since she was in her undergarments and her clothes were nowhere in the area. The oil drum had fallen over, so, <clears throat> excuse me, it's also possible she burned herself to death. It couldn't possibly have been suicide. If you're going to die, there are plenty of easier ways, aren't there? This is, this can't be. That's what I think. It's unthinkable that Tommy Takesan would kill himself too. After the two us rattled on. <laughs> After the two us rattled on at each other. <laughs> Indeed, there was a silence as we paused to catch our breaths. And as we calmed our nerves, right then I understood what Shion's story actually meant. I think it will end up being Oyashiro Summer's curse. We all did more than enough to deserve it, after all. Deserve? You gotta be kidding! It's not like I. Shion wanted to see it with me, I just went along with her. I tried to say that, but I fell silent. Nothing would come of me blaming others. Didn't matter how much everyone else encouraged me, I could have put my foot down. I lost to my own half assed sense of adventure and agreed to go in with them. Yes, it was my fault and no one else's. Is this actual growth on Keiichi's part? Shion, last night, when we snuck into the ritual storehouse, did you predict things would turn out this way? Of course not. I mean, I thought it was pretty risky, but I never even dreamed something like this could happen. Xion's words were probably her true feelings. Probably. She knew she could get in trouble if we were caught, but that was the thrill of this little adventure. It was the same for me. Besides that, Kei-chan, think about it for a moment. Didn't Oyashiro-sama's curse turn out a little strange this year? It was already plenty strange, seeing as how Tomi Takesan and Takano-san died like that. Given all that, what could possibly be stranger? I mean, that they found two corpses. Remember what I said? Every other year, one person would die and one person would disappear. This year is the first time two people have been found dead. That may be true, but that's not a huge deal, is it? It is, Kei-chan. Think about it harder. Listen. If two people died because of Oyashiro-sama's curse, then, in order to quell Oyashiro-sama's anger, two people would need to be sacrificed. Is that how it works? So what? Tomi Takesan and Takano-san died, so now two people are going to go missing this year? I don't understand why, but when I said that, I felt my spine freeze. I don't think anyone's been confirmed missing yet. I think that those two people have yet to disappear. Dun dun dun. Shion, like me, was obviously getting the same feeling crawling down her back. Two people have yet to disappear. Shion didn't answer. I couldn't say any more than that either. A chill crept in through my clothes and tried to wrap into a fist around my heart. Mmm, that's a visual. Cold hands feeling about on my chest. Uh-huh, that's another visual. Okay. 
Neither of us could say anything. Tommy Takesan opened the lock, and he died. Takano-san exposed the ritual storehouse, and she died. If two more people were to be sacrificed, then they would be none other than the ones who entered with them. None other than us. No, this has got to be a joke. I wanted so much for her to pass this off as a joke, even now. That, though, was such an incredibly difficult and selfish request. If Tommy Takesan and Takano-san had died in a common way like a car accident, I could tell myself it was a coincidence. Instead, he clawed out his own throat, and she burned to death, drowned in oil in the mountains. The two deaths were so out of the ordinary that I couldn't possibly dismiss it as mere coincidence. It was as if, in exchange for a sneaking into the ritual storehouse, there must be someone punishing us, some sort of cruel will working behind the scenes. Even so, I still didn't want to accept that terrifying truth. If I did, then I would have to acknowledge that a horrible crisis was growing near for Shion and I. That's why I argued against it. I argued knowing I was running away. I, in the first place, it's not even in the newspaper, is it? Such a monstrous incident would be all over the newspapers and television. Magazine writers would flood the village too, thinking it'd make for an interesting story. Of course it's not getting reported by the media. That's how it was in the past too. When the incidents occurred for the third year in a row, there were some third-rate magazines that sniffed out a story and ran issues full of gossip columns about Hinamizawa. Fearing that the region would develop a negative stigma, they negotiated with the prefecture and the police. Since last year, it became a big conspiracy where no information about the incidents was allowed to be leaked to the media. I hear the elders and the top brass from the Sonozaki family put all the pressure they could on the police. Then you mean, their deaths are going to be dealt with in total secrecy? That's how it is. Of course, the police are investigating it. That's being performed in secret too though, so I hear the investigation itself is very restricted in what it can and can't do. You could essentially say they're interfering with the police investigation. This story was unbelievable. People died, and yet they don't publicise it and deal with everything in secret. If we break it down further, it means that no matter who dies on the night of Watanag Watanagashi, it won't go public. That's the biggest pile of bullshit I've ever heard. Kei-chan, before I said how the villagers could be the ones carrying out oyashiro summer's curse. That's what I mean. At some point, a tradition was created here in Hinamizawa, where every year you're allowed to kill someone on the night of Watanagashi under the guise of it being oyashiro summer's curse. When someone dies on the night of Watanagashi, it turns into the curse of oyashiro summer. The curse turns into the serial murder incidents. In order to avoid exacerbating the negative stigma, stigma surrounding Hinamizawa, those incidents are dealt with in secret. That's insane. Dead and missing people turn up every year. However bad the stigma gets, the police have to draw the line somewhere, don't they? You could say the incidents happening every year is mysterious, but the police can get the job done when they need to. After all, the incidents always get resolved individually. It doesn't end up being a string of incidents, you know? It just so happens that something unfortunate happens on the night of Watanagashi every year. That's all it turns into. Most of the criminals responsible for the original dismemberment were arrested. The last one managed to get and stay away, but the events were so totally exposed and elucidated so it was, in essence, resolved. The dam supporting couple who died in an accident on the second year, that was an accidental death, plain and simple. They made a lot of investigations into the possibility of it having been a homicide, but they didn't turn up anything. It ended up as an accident. It was resolved. On the third year, the priest fell ill and passed away. There were doctors present at the hospital at his deathbed, and they all had trustworthy medical certificates. They even did an autopsy. It concluded that it wasn't a homicide. That was resolved too. On the fourth year, the sister-in-law of the dam supporting couple was murdered. The criminal was an abnormal man with a history of regular psychostimulant usage. 
He confessed that he thought Oyashiro Sama's curse was so interesting he wanted to try it out. The criminal died of an accident while in prison, so this incident was essentially resolved as well. That's right. None of the incidents had any relation to, ino- to another and each was independently resolved. So then, why does an unfortunate coincidence occur every year on the night of Watanagashi? You can try and say it's a string of related incidents, but they're not related. Yet every year, someone always dies and someone always disappears. The story Takano-san told me the day before during the setup, now that the curse really had occurred this year, I couldn't just laugh it off. Then does that mean it'll come for us too? Just like how one person dies and one person disappears every year, are you saying we'll be taken along with Tomi Takesan and Takano-san and erased too? My lips had at some point become completely dry and just saying that was difficult. Hmm, same. Shion didn't respond. Her silence, however, was the clearest form of confirmation she could give me. We, I mean, sure, we went somewhere we shouldn't have. But we were just looking, right? We didn't steal anything or take anything out, and we didn't tell anyone that we looked right. I was already regretting having committed such a wrong. Even so, was it really so bad that Takano-san and Takano-san deserve such cruel deaths? Besides, I didn't care about anything I saw in there at all. Takano-san was the only one getting so happy over it, wasn't she? Takano-san was the only one at fault. I don't have anything to do with this. I'm not interested. I'm not involved. I don't give a shit about what was in there. I knew saying so wouldn't solve anything. I could feel myself, my cold self in the innermost depths of my heart, disgusted at my pointless howling. I mean, he said it. However, my emotions had broken through the dam and I couldn't stop them anymore. I didn't have any interest in any of this from the start, damn it. All I wanted to do was watch Nika-chan's performance. You were the one who pulled me away from that, weren't you, Shion? I don't give a rat's ass whether those two were trying to steal something or try to meet up secretly or whatever. That's right, you're the one who made me go in there in the first place, Shion. You were all, Kei-chan, you need to see what's inside, and you convinced me and then pulled me in. Why the hell did you do that? I didn't have anything to do with this. What will you do? What are you going to do, damn it? How are you going to take responsibility for this? Huh? Hey, are you listening? Ah. Hmm, indeed. Click. <laughs> Same. <laughs> she, she doesn't have to put up with that crap. <laughs> Without any warning, the phone cut off with the soft sound of a receiver being slammed down. <laughs> oh, yes, terrified. Xion was just as terrified as I was. Oh, I just said some really self centered things. My riled up emotions disappeared as if they'd never existed and in their place surged waves of deep regret at having run my mouth so irresponsibly. I could try to call out Xion's name from beyond the disconnected phone, but it was too late. Get wrecked. What have I done? Xion was only trying to tell me as much as she could about this thing about to descend upon us. As for me, I could only whine like a child about it. He said it. I went to call her back, but then remembered she lived in Okinomiya. I didn't know her phone number. Since I had declared to Mion that I hadn't seen Xion last night, I couldn't just call Mion and ask her for Xion's phone number. Ooh, take a shot every time. I was too scared. I couldn't even call her back. I was stricken with hopeless regret. I returned the receiver to its stand, and I simply prayed that Xion would call me back again. Please, Xion, calm down and call me again. I mean, you just went on a giant rant at her, and now you're telling her to calm down? Sure. Ring, ring, ring. Hello, this is Mayabara. I swept up the receiver as though it wouldn't go through if I didn't grab it at at that exact moment. Is this the Mayabara residence? Excuse me for the late call. I'm Kimiyoshi. Is this the head of the household? It was the voice of a middle-aged man. All my hopes rushed out of me. No, it isn't. If you need Dad, I'll go call him. I went to put the receiver back down, but the man stopped me hurriedly. Oh, no, no, if he's busy, then it's fine. 
This may be a strange question, but is my old man paying you a visit? No, nobody's here at the moment. I see. Again, I apologize for calling you so late at night. Goodbye. Clack. I don't know who that was, but what if Shion tried to call while I was talking to him? I thought, bubbling with egotistic anger. That's a new one I've never seen. Egotistic anger. Indeed. Hey, wait. Give it a break, Keiichi Mayabara. These are the selfish emotions that made Shion mad at me, aren't they? The more I thought about it, though, the more I thought that Shion had given up hope in the short time since we had our conversation and didn't want to call anymore. I mean, let's not forget that you ranted at her and she hung up on you. She does not have to deal with that bullshit. Calm yourself, Keiichi Mayabara. If Shion does call again, then first apologize in a calm voice. If you do that, then Shion should understand. However, no matter how long I waited, the phone didn't ring again that night. Ooh, we got new tips. Alright, from the scrapbook. The Significance of Watanagashi Watanagashi, a festival of hunting for sacrifices and feasting on them. While the festival itself is remarkable, it has come to be considered a form of entertainment as well. Perhaps it was because of the disparity between both between being both an egregious act and a form of entertainment that the perpetrators began to believe themselves transcendent. That was a lot of words. However, I found some very interesting literature that appears to raise questions about that explanation. As with most oral traditions, it's not easily swallowed. <laughs> but it does mention a few things that spark my interest. <laughs> According to this literature, even the residents of Onigahuchi village felt fear towards this ritual. Women and children would grow pale and tremble, and those of weak constitution would vomit. But it said that the feast, the dissection, was an obligatory viewing. This is an extremely curious tale. Until now, I'd thought that the residents of Onigafuchi village were fascinated by the Watanagashi ritual. They looked down on those vulgar, barbaric humans, cut them open like fish, and by eating them, they reaffirmed their own holiness. At least, that's what I thought. However, if what the villagers gained from this ritual was not fascination, but fear, then that would suggest the ritual meant something entirely different. There's the possibility that the executions were meant as warnings, encouraging the villagers to strictly follow religious precepts created by those with power for their own convenience. Onigafuchi village has been effectively ruled over by three old families called the Three Families. Hmm, unique name. Without investigating the three families, I probably won't get any closer to the truth of Onigafuchi village. Hmm, indeed. Alright, next one. The three families. The three families refers to the three old families who effectively came to rule Onigafuchi village. To break it down, there was the Kimiyoshi family the Hurude family, and the Sonozaki family, and each of them still exist today. Though they don't have as much control as they did in the remote past, they still hold considerable influence today. The three families are considered by legend to be those in whom the blood of the swamp demons runs the thickest. It's me, the swamp demon. The Kimiyoshi family. The Kimiyoshi family appears to have had Great power as the head of the three families, but it doesn't have that kind of leadership today. The current mayor of the village, Yoshi, Yoshiichiro, Yoshiichiro Kimiyoshi, is from this family. The fact that the members of the Kimiyoshi family are elected as mayor every generation is thought to be a remnant of the old system. 
Of course, as no rival candidates appear, it doesn't change the fact that the Kimiyoshi family holds the mayoral office, even though popular elections in the post, even through popular elections in the post-war era. The Hurude family. The center of the village's faith since ancient times, the Hurude clan has guarded the sole shrine dedicated to Oyashiro-sama. They were worshipped as the only people to represent the voice of Oyashiro-sama for a long time, but the family branched off after the war and lost most of its power. It now consists of only the main house. The main house as well presently consists of only one daughter, Rika Hurude, so the lineage may end in this generation. There is apparently an old tradition of honouring females of the Hurude family, so the only daughter, Rika, is a subject of much respect amongst the elderly of the village. The Sonozaki family. It's said that this family had a certain police-like role of protecting the religious pre- how do I pronounce this word? Precepts? Of Onigafuchi village. Of the three families, their relatively weak position can be seen from me putting them here last. <gasps> Did you just call the Sonozakis weak? Good sir. Of course, today the Sonozaki family is flourishing, and the state of affairs among the three families has completely reversed. Even now, one could say they are in control of Hinamizawa. The three families conferring with each other is similar to the old way. The current head of the Sonozaki family, Oryo, essentially decides all of the goings-on in the village by herself. Okay. We haven't seen much of the Kimiyoshis yet. All right, and the last one, late night phone call. Excuse me for the late call. I'm Kimiyoshi. Ah, here we go. Is this the head of the household? Yes, no, not at all. Thank you very much for that. Yes. Well, you see, I do apologize for calling at this hour, but I was wondering if our old man was visiting you at the moment. You've got that right. Yes. Once again. I'm very sorry for calling so late. Goodbye. Click. So? No good. I'm not sure what to do. He may be passionate about it, but he always at least gives us a call. You called everyone he plays go with, didn't you? Bring. Yellow. This is Kimiyoshi. This is Sonozaki. How did it go? Have you found the mayor? Oh, Mion-chan. I called everyone I could think of, but I came up with nothing. We can't find him. What do I do? Where could he be idling about? I put a word in with a bunch of people who might have an idea, but nobody did. I asked Nana about it. Nana? Nana, as in her, her grandma? Or Nana? As in a woman's name. <gasps> we may never know. And she said we should get the men of the village together to search for him. At this hour? I mean, it's not like he's definitely gone missing. Watanagashi just happened. She thinks we should be a little more cautious. If we still can't find him, then we'll notify the police tomorrow morning. Whether or not we find him, though, we should refrain from making any false accusations. Oryo-san said that. Oh, so, Nana. Not Nana. Yes! If you can't trust her without hearing her voice, then I can put her on for you. No, that's fine. I understand. We'll get the men together and search. If we still can't find him, then we will notify the police in the morning. She'll leave it to you to organise the men. I'll be there as well as Nana's representative. Thank you. I'll get everyone together immediately. Thanks. I'll talk to you later. Hmm. Intriguing, intriguing, intriguing. Okay, we're going to end this episode right here. Because we're just a little over time. Things are proceeding. I'm intrigued. I do want to know what happens next. Anyway, come back next week and let's find out. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you again next time. See ya.